ban, 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 they don't like punks, ban from the pubs. That was uh, from a very dark time in punk history where punks were banned from the pubs. They didn't like punks, they thought punks were dangerous, edgy, a problematic threat to society. Uh, we're actually recording this on Saturday so we can get the news out because there has been some breaking news! <laughs> Isn't it funny that they used a Morse code to recognize, to symbolize the news? Was this, this must have been the 1940s at best. Why is that in my head as a news sound? Do 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 you're kind of drifting into Jordan Peterson there a little bit with his Dude, Kermit. it's absolutely brutal, dude. <laughs> it's like my wife, you know? Clean your room. It's like Kermit the Frog telling you to clean your room all the time. <laughs> you clean your room, Kermit. Try to get your relationship with Miss Piggy in order. She's always telling me, you know, uh, you're, you're the best green frog I know. <laughs> We're married. You gotta add bloody. Every time you do Jordan Peterson, we need the word bloody in there at least once. Yeah. Anyway, Rich Little. Uh... <laughs> I thought it would be fun to do a special episode, make it free, rum. I, f I love rum. Um, and just, let's look at my last 20 tweets. Oh, wait, I forgot to tell you the breaking news. <laughs> the breaking news is, Gavin McInnes, who has two thumbs and loves blowjobs, is banned from Twitter forever, and so are the Proud Boys, my men's club, which is... I guess the best way to describe it would be the Knights of Columbus meets Animal House. Relatively apolitical, pro-Trump, but everyone in the Knights of Columbus is pro-Trump. According to the left, though, we're a dangerous threat that's going to do something terrible like help Trump get re-elected. That's really what all this is about, the midterms. This giant wave, this conservative purge, is about preventing Trump from winning. He's already won. We know he's getting two terms. Come on, guys. Accept it. Look in the mirror and say two terms, lefties. Banned Alex Jones. They banned him on about uh, so many platforms like Pinterest and stuff. But uh, obviously Facebook, Google, the biggies. And now they ban me on Twitter. Uh, I tried to tweet this last night. And I was told to get knotted, as my dad used to say when I was a kid. You know, people ask me, what, what exactly did they say? I actually had some lawyers calling me wanting to get litigious about this, which I'm happy to do. It's strange, because punks are not naturally litigious, but I'm ready to rock now. It's time to play dirty. You, you started it. But the message I got from Twitter was, um, you have been uh, suspended. Don't ever come back. That's not what suspended means, by the way. I was a bad kid in, in school. Suspended means three days. And then you come back, there's expelled. That's when you got to get a job. But, you know, go back to that. I took a picture of my computer. It says, specifically for... Uh, note that if you attempt to start a new account, blah, 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 we'll delete that too. Suspended for blank. It's right next to you. I don't understand that. That seems really inefficient too, isn't it? It's, it's like some libtard said... Uh, I want to ban you because you're racist. And you go, what? My wife's American Indian. How am I racist? Isn't this really just about Trump and how you don't want him to win and you're trying to censor everyone who likes him on social media? And their answer is... That's, that's Jack responding to this. Hit the road, Jack. Um, so I thought it would be fun just to do a quick app and look at the past 20 tweets I've had. Because I'm very lucky in the sense that, uh, God bless you, thank you, Lord Jack. I'm very lucky in the sense that I can see my past 20 tweets still. For some reason on my computer, I'm kind of ghostedly still there. I'm haunting the world. By the way, just, I want to make something clear here. Uh, the left sees me as this ominous threat they can kill. I'm already dead in a sense that you don't see me on, on YouTube anymore. I'm only on CRTV.com. Please go there right now and sign up with the passcode Gavin. You can see my show every day. You don't need me on Twitter, although I have a free podcast also called Get, Get Off My Lawn. And I do two other shows 
on CRTV. I do a talk show with a big set in D.C. that's called uh, CRTV Tonight. I forgot the name of my own show for a second there. And also After Hours. It's a more sit-down-y show. But as far as, like, my message uh, outside of that, it's already floating around YouTube from clips that are pirated from Fox News, from old Rebel clips. I mean, you'd have to put in facial recognition software and then say, delete all those videos. Nice America, by the way, that you want. So when I walk down the street, I keep bumping into people. Holy shit, millennial men are always trying to take selfies with me, which is... Uh, what do you want to photograph of someone you were with? We're not friends. What are you going to do? Put it on your mantelpiece? Uh, that's the guy I stood next to for one second. It, it infuriates me. I'd rather have enemies. But uh, anyway, I have all those, I don't want to call them fans, but people who recognize me because of YouTube. It's got nothing to do with Twitter. You can't take it away, guys. I'm sorry. The genie's out of the bottle. Trump's already won. You can't kill Alex Jones. Alex Jones made $5 million from this purge, and he's the number one app. I am worried about what this will do to CRTV uh, subscribers. I don't think we have the bandwidth. We're going to, the computers are gonna melt. Scotty, do you do Scotty? You better not. Who's Scotty? Oh. No, who is who is Scotty? Scotty from Star Trek, the Scottish engineer. Oh, no, I do uh, Zulu. Okay. Is that the black chick? I thought it was the Asian guy. Uh, uh. <laughs> That's your Zulu? Let's so I just your, turned to the camera. Let's see your Zulu again. Why are you, can I ask you something, Zulu? Yeah. Why are you killing so many white farmers in South Africa right now? What do you stand to gain? You're going to starve to death. Oh, the Zulus are killing the Hulus, are killing the Wootsies, are murdering the Tootsies. My heart bleeds for Africa. We used to say that as a joke before my heart really did bleed for Africa. Um, now I'm off at a tangent now. What the hell was I talking about? We're going to do the past 20 tweets. Uh, because people want to know, like, oh, you must have made a pedophile joke. No, pedophile jokes are awesome. They're, they're very, they're highly recommended. Did you see recently James Gunn was caught not just having a girlfriend that looks like she's eight, but going to pedophile-themed parties? Can you imagine if the left had to live up to this kind of scrutiny? They'll go through 700 hours of my footage and try to take words out of context and make a montage, or they just out-and-out out lie, which we'll get to. But, um... As far as what we truly believe, they can't debate us. And when Ben Shapiro asks Alexandria ocasio Cortez, who is from Puerto Rico originally, she goes, stop, cat cal stop catcalling me. You asking me to debate you is basically rape. You're raping me right now. Whoa, 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 sorry. Actually, should we just jump ahead to that, to the reaction before we do the past 20 tweets? Because everyone wants to know, oh, you must have said the N-word or something or called for the assassination of of Bernie Sanders. Assassination. Yeah, it's a very difficult assassination. You got a very permanent uh, suspension. <laughs> <laughs> what if Tony Soprano was on our side? What if he was on our side and really worried about us? Hey, he's looking very bad for the new right. Oh my. Yeah, the, li the libs and the devs are out of control. <laughs> <laughs> Your Soprano's so good and mine Makes me cringe. My Tony Soprano hurts my ears as much as your Scottish hurts my ears. It hurts my shoulders when I look at you do it. It's a very difficult situation. I yeah. need to get that age. You, you look like the kid doing that Vox video. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that gay dude. Uh, you know, we just discovered that guy isn't even writing it. He's reading what some cat mom, <laughs> lonely cat mom wrote for him. It's some Morticia Adams looking lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some woman who doesn't actually want a husband. I love being single. I love being a booty call at two in the morning and then totally abandoned. It's actually fun. I like not having to get, get breakfast with them. I have my own breakfast on my own time. With me and Mr. Fiddlesticks. It's brutal. It's brutal. Um, all right. Let's, let's just, so, banned from Twitter. And uh, I go, oh, well, you know, it's someone else's platform. Although Trump was told he can't block people because it's a free speech forum. But we're told we can't be on it because it's not a free speech forum. I don't quite get the hypocrisy there. But believe it or not, I'm not crying in the bath. Actually, speaking of fun, I just got an offer to do an Australian tour after this, which was quite uh, fruitful. More money than I've be ever been offered for a speaking engagement. Um, anyway, let's just look at some of the titles from the left. Totally different from the right. But there's look at Variety. Have you got that Variety article? Twitter shuts down... Uh, uh, what, what 
Twitter shuts down accounts of Vice co-founder. How long am I going to be the Vice co-founder? That was 1994, before any of you were born. Vice co-founder Gavin McInnes, Proud Boys, ahead of Unite the Right rally. Unite the Right rally? Let's just take a step back here. You know who supports the Unite the Right rally? Nobody. No conservative you've ever heard of and that's ever appeared on a screen that has a job supports Unite the Right. Not, not, no one. No one that's ever been on Fox News supports Unite the Right. It is very, very esoteric. It is as far right, I've got to make sure I'm getting my, my background, my rights and lefts right for your vision, but it is as far right as like a national kill all men, trans, Antifa, communist, let's destroy the entire world meeting. They both exist. I think they're both very similar in the sense that they are both anti-Semites. They both hate Israel. They both love identity politics. They both want big government. They both want more regulation. They're both atheists. Very similar, but very esoteric. No one supports Unite the Right. What about Heather Heyer? Yeah, I'm very sorry about that. Terrible, terrible thing. Not me. That's not my bag. I disavowed Unite the Right before it was cool. I disavowed Unite the Right months before the 2017 one. And when some Proud Boys said, are you going to disavow this Unite the Right? I honestly said, really? Like if David Duke has a Klan rally, do I have to go, I have nothing to do with this? It seems redundant at this point. But I tweeted it out anyway about 12 hours before I, I was banned. And I said, uh, this goes without saying. Have you got that tweet? Well, we'll get to it. Well, let's do them in order. But I said, it goes without saying, but we clearly disavow this. Doy. We're not freaks. We're multiracial, blah, 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 blah. Which is... Pedantic. It's getting tedious constantly saying that, and that's the right's game. It's in Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals. Just keep them tangled up with this crap. Keep them like a, a cat with a ball of yarn, dealing with, I'm not racist, I'm not racist, not racist, and then we can go and do stuff over there. It's like the settlements in Israel. Keep them arguing about the settlements, and then we can go throw rockets from Gaza. Or gay marriage. Gays, are they really dying to get married? Let's keep the debate over there, and then we can be safe over here and just be super gay. So that was the angle of the left. And there's something curious about this. All the headlines were the same on the left. Ezra Levant's theory is that, you know, it's linked to globalism and what he calls the Borg with the S SPLC and the ADL and all these well-funded organizations that get paid to convince paranoid old people that there's Nazis looming around every corner. But isn't it funny they all have the same headline? And by the way, when I saw this headline, I went, what? Unite the right, that's why. So you're trying to argue that we were banned from Twitter right before Unite the Right so we couldn't get the Unite the Right thing going, but we don't go to Unite the Right. So that was Variety ahead of. Then what's CBS News? Um, Twitter suspends Proud Boys Gavin McInnes accounts ahead, ahead of, of Unite the, Unite the right. right Rally. Same title. Journalists are so lazy. And one of the reasons I think they're so out of touch these days is they honestly don't leave their little cubicle. Like, go to Unite the Right if you're a journalist. You should be safe, obviously, but you should be at that thing. You should be at Tommy Robinson's uh, uh, appeal, whatever, his, his retrial, whatever you want to call it, on, on uh, September 4th. You should be going to these things. You're a journalist. You're supposed to have like a, a you know, a little notepad where, like, excuse me, you're a bum, Charlie. Boop, 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 breaking news. Hey, do you have anything to say about the blah, blah, blah? Not just Googling other articles and repeating the headline the Borg told you to. So that's one. Uh, what was the other one? What's Huffington Post? Have you got that one? Twitter bans Proud Boys account before United the, the, before Unite the Right 2 rally. Ooh. So we have some variety here. We've changed ahead of to before. And then Mashable, the same. Pull that up. That should be the next one. I think, did they go for before or ahead of? Oh, that's different. Holy cow, that's different. When I first put this up, it said before. They've changed their title. See, this drives me nuts about the left. Oh, you know what it is? We sent lawyers letters to all these people. Oh, wow. And modern leftist um, journalism is this amorphous blob that every time you make a mistake, you don't say update. This original version of this said that she died in uh, Kuwait. Now, now they just make her die in Afghanistan and your mistake is gone. They made, <laughs> so some, they made some alterations because of litigation. Yeah, well, it was a very difficult situation. <laughs> but uh, they, 
It always stays in the URL, you'll notice. All right, let's see if BuzzFeed changed their title. Ahead of Unite the Right, so they're fine. Actually, that guy, Blake Montgomery, called me, and he goes, hi, is this? And I know it's from BuzzFeed. He's like, this is Blake Montgomery. Are you, are you Gavin? And I went, uh-oh, this, you're clearly gay. This does not bode well for a, a fair piece. I don't know what kind of accent I would have expected from BuzzFeed. Look. I hate to hear it, BuzzFeed. I'm tormented. I hate about you. It's absolute crap, by the way. Then I go, oh, thank God. We've got someone who's going to be fair. And then the rap, did they go for before or ahead of? Before. That's, I, you know what? I appreciate before. I think brevity is more important in journalism. And if you can make it in less words, that's why I hate French. There's too many words. One time I was at a pool in Quebec and these kids got kicked out and I said, what's going on with them in French? And the guy goes, oh, c'est pas grave, c'est une affaire jaune, tu vois. Oh, it is not grave, it is an affair of the young, you see? What? Just say bad kids, boom, we're done. We don't like floral crap in America or Canada. All right, so, sorry, I'm making this too long, but conservatives, just the facts. Look at these headlines. We got, boom, Daily Caller. Twitter suspends libertarian commenter. Boom, we're done. Just the facts. Breitbart. You got Breitbart up there? What'd they say? Twitter bans conservative commentator Gavin McInnes. Boom, totally true. Gotcha. Oh, by the way, can I just say something? Go back to that picture. That's me at the premiere of Creative Control. And uh, it's a movie I did with uh, a bunch of cool people that were really funny, like Reggie Watts. And uh, after I saw the premiere, th there's a guy having a panic attack at a, at a disco, at a panic at the disco. <laughs> and I said, why'd you make the movie so sort of, no uh, the music so normal for that scene? The person's freaking out at a dance club. You should have made it trippy music. And he goes, uh, we did. And then they found out you were in the movie. And the artist said, quote unquote, he wants trans people to die. So at the 11th hour, I had to remove it and use stock music. <laughs> yeah, I want trans people to die. That's what I want. This is the thing. All of their allegations are based on lies. Like if someone wanted all trans people to die, that's a good, uh, it's a good argument to say that guy is a real problem. He wants people to die. That's an issue. But none of it's ever based on what you truly believe. Like, here's something I truly believe. Trans people are not women. A trans man is, a, a man who's in a dress is not a woman. He's mostly, usually, a mentally ill gay. That's controversial enough. Why do you have to lie? You hate all men immigrants. No, I, I love immigrants. I'm an immigrant. I just think that Islamic immigrants have a disproportionate number of jihadists. And as far as the Mexican illegals we're getting these days, they're not sending their best. A disproportionate number of them are rapists. That's why 80% of the women crossing the border get raped. 80%? I mean, was, when Genghis Khan invaded a village, what was it? Probably 25%. You're worse than Genghis Khan. And I think if you do uh, you and me plus 23 or whatever that thing is, everyone in Asia has some Genghis Khan in them. Some had more than others. <laughs> wah, wah. All right. We're f <laughs> you have any Genghis Khan in you? No. You want some? Uh, do that as Andrew Dice Clay. I got Genghis Khan in me, honey. Is that what? Wow. So you don't do Andrew Dice Clay is basically what we're getting from you. Uh, no, I do Anthony Cumia's uh, Genghis Khan. Oh, <laughs> right. It's like David Bowie when he did Andy Warhol. No, everyone is now going to see that as Andy Warhol. So when you do Andy Warhol, if you don't do it like David Bowie did it, because yeah. no one remembers Andy Warhol, there was no, very little footage of him. All right, ready? We're ready to start. Yeah, and then there's this one too also. PJ Media, Friday Purge, Twitter D platforms, Gavin McInnes and the Proud Boys account. Yeah, go, th go through that one. That one was very uh, well done and included tons of other people. Oh, yeah, it's not just me, right? So I'm done. Proud Boys is done. Proud Boys Girls is done. But every single account that's Proud Boys is gone. And if you try to send a link, oh, that's what I wanted you to go back, go back. If you try to send a link, like to a Proud Boys website that says we're not racist, whatever, we didn't do that, uh, the tweet won't send. So it's put a block on that entire thing. I honestly don't think the KKK has that kind of stringent uh, regulation. And you know why that is? Because, and I hate using this word, we're cool. Sorry, that was making me cringe to say. But that's what it comes down to. Look at that video. Play that video. Ryan, this is why we're banned. Because a bunch of 
miscreant <laughs> vagrants, there we go, a bunch of rich kids, not vagrants, a bunch of professors' sons attacked us when we were unarmed, and Rufio knocked them out. Rufio Pamant. By the way, Rufio is also banned. They started a fight when we were protecting, basically doing bodyguard work for a Christian named Joey Gibson at Patriot Prayer, and we beat them all up. Unarmed, they were armed. That has a lot of appeal to the young people. In fact, Proud Boys numbers swelled after that. So what do you do when someone's getting popular for being awesome? You try to stop their voice. Well, I was in punk bands in the 80s. I was trading cassette tapes with people in Britain in 1986. There was life before social media, believe it or not. We were able to congregate. We were able to have massive festivals and concerts without any social media. We don't need you. The genie's out of the bottle, the cat is out of the bag, and you're out of your mind. Why didn't I think of that at the very end? That would have been a perfect ending. It's pretty good. All right. So, I promised you, you would see my last 20 tweets. This is rare. Usually people go, but I didn't say that, and then they can't show you. But for some reason, I'm able to show you. So, here's my very last tweet before I was banned. It says, today's GOML podcast, you have a finite amount of chi. Chi is that uh, stupid hippie term for body energy. You can mess with that using drugs, blah, blah, blah. So it was about my free podcast, which is Get Off My Lawn. And it was me saying um, that you, you really, I honestly, I, this is a discovery I had recently. You don't have a, uh, an infinite amount of productivity in you. So like, say you have a super important, I'm off at a tangent now, but this was my point, And this is the evil person you're trying to censor. Say you have an insanely important pitch the next day or a big meeting. Don't go out the night before, and then that day, don't do anything. Have a bath. Go for a walk. Don't talk to anyone. So when you get to that pitch or that meeting, it's you're fresh as a daisy and ready to rock. That just reminded me I've got a ton of important meetings tonight, and I'm spending all my chips. I'm going to suck at these meetings. These are meetings about suing Twitter and all kinds of other stuff, which, by the way, i got to be careful about because I'm actually kind of glad Hey, judge, don't use this. This is inadmissible. The things I'm about to say are lies. Uh, I'm actually kind of glad I was addicted to it. And my brain was starting to think in a Twitter mentality. Like I'd think of something or my toothpaste would fall sideways and I'd go, looks like my toothpaste is drunk. Oh, that's a tweet. I'll take a picture of the toothpaste and blah, blah, blah. You start living your life through Twitter and my kids would be saying, dad, want to play catch? Uh... I'm, I haven't even checked my tweets in at least in at least four minutes. Obviously not, dude. I actually paid my son. I said, I'll give you a dollar every time I'm on the f you catch me on my phone. And he ended up making up to like 50 bucks, which I gave him. Then he just bought fries for everyone after school. So this is this cold turkey is actually good for me. And I kind of feel liberated. All right, Judge, now you can you can unplug your ears, Judge. <laughs> Back to the lawsuit where I sue you for taking Twitter away from me. All right, so that was number one, right? The chi. Uh, second last was me saying, uh, Kathy Shadle criticized improv people, and I criticized... That's not coming out nice there, right, guy? It's coming out cropped. You're not looking very prepared. I know, but I'll cr try criticizing... Oh, sorry, I'm right. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm like the Fonz. You ever see the Fonz try to say wrong? Look, I was... <laughs> when I'm wrong, I say, look, I'm really sorry. I was right. No, I was right. No, right. I say it like uh, Ted Kennedy after he, uh, <laughs> after he killed that girl. Uh, she drowned, and that was my good. I was right. Um... So, I, yeah, Kathy Shadle uh, criticized improv people, and uh, there was intense blowback. And there are certain groups that are very verbose online. I find gays are like that, probably because they don't have a family, like uh, kids running around. So they tend to, when you make a gay enemy on, on, uh, online, Asians too. I did an article called Asian Privilege where I took an article about white privilege, and I just did an edit replace and changed everything to Asian. And, wow, my inbox was full that week. But anyway, Kathy Shadow points out improv people are rough, and I said Disney Cruise. I, I wrote an article in 2011, I think, about a Disney Cruise. Well, it's right here. Uh, yeah, 2011. So seven years ago, and I'm still getting crap for daring to criticize Disney. When they have fans, they have fans. And I'll say it again. Disney Cruises suck, and everyone on them is boring. Uh, what's that now? One, two, three. 
I'm consistently shocked by the brutal grammar in millennial tweets. And this is a guy that said, uh, I so love, I loved Vice until they had an agenda. Coincidence or directly related from your departure? The, I, the education has gotten so bad. I think the teachers are totally focused on Marxism and they forgot to teach spelling and grammar. Have you noticed when they do dollar signs now, it's one and then the dollar sign afterwards? Or even Ryan, have a look at Ryan today. He came, he came into the office and I said, you're looking all fancy, why are you so dressed up? And he said the following, I'm wearing this in solemnness as to the situation. Something like that. I think that's better than what I said, actually. As to, this is, you said, you, you should say, first of all, you have to convey your joke, so you can't be giggling, and you have to go, I'm wearing this because of this solemn day. Boom. Like, as to and purposefully instead of purposeful, or misogynistic instead of misogynist. They keep adding all these extra things to sound smart. They sound like a rapper wearing fake glasses. All right, next. Weird that a white supremacist wouldn't know what the word white looks like, or a swastika for that matter, hashtag hoax. And this is a BLM activist clearly lying and <laughs> saying that Nazis wrote white, W-I-T-E. Is he illiterate or is he trying to make them, does he think that hillbillies are illiterate? Uh, white pride, Jesus, what if he can't spell the word white? How embarrassing would that be? <laughs> he went, someone went, yeah, I like your hate crime hoax, but he spelled white wrong. Did you know there was another one recently where it said um, something about black people? It said B L B L A C with no K, and there was enough room for a K. There's always enough. There's not enough room for three Ks. <laughs> That's kind of my motto. Right. And they also did the swastika wrong, where I assume if you're a white nationalist, you're seeing a lot of Nazi books. You have them in your house. A backward swastika should probably look unusual to you. You should go. I'm not Hindu. Uh, I don't believe in uh, uh, reincarnation. That's like a Salvador Dali swastika. It's like drooping off the... You see the one with the clocks melting? Now, yeah, yeah, that's okay. the guy. Now, I don't know black culture that well, especially American black culture, but w maybe we should ask Sway. Sway, do you think this is a hate crime hoax? Uh, Sway in the morning with MTV News, uh, Lee is dead. Uh, Blink-182 making top of the charts, and this is a hoax. That one wasn't great. <laughs> what? Uh, it sounds great. too kermy. All right. Now we're up to like uh, one, two, three, four. This is my fifth last week. We're going way over. This is going to be an extra long episode. Usually these are TV length, 42 minutes. So we can put in some uh, Ford commercials. Actually, I don't know why we bother making them 42 minutes because the whole purpose of CRTV is that we don't have to worry about boycotts or advertisers or, or social media, uh, social justice warrior, social media pressure. All right. This was a funny sketch by... Uh, I retweeted this. It's a funny sketch uh, by Harry and Paul. And they are possibly the funniest sketch show on earth and totally politically incorrect. Now, this is a great sketch because it's lampooning American tourists and how annoying they are and how they won't shut up when they come to visit Britain. But with all this new political correctness, it actually looks like they're lampooning burqas, but they're not. But that's how... I, I love it because... Things are so taboo now that even when someone isn't making fun of Islam, it looks like they are. So here's the actual sketch I so retweeted. So I need cards so I can make notes for our vacation blog. Hello, how are you today? <laughs> Hello, how are you? What a great day, huh? Hello, uh, how are you? And I need uh, scotch tape for my bifocals. I, I think they call it cello tape. So cello tape, all right, cello tape, cello tape. Where's the cello tape? <laughs> oh, so Have you noticed that British people can it? rarely do good American accents? No, that's not true. They're all the Andrew Garfield, every actor in Hollywood. When I meet them, though, in Britain, they can't. And every time I say do an American accent, they say, okay, man, let's go down to the disco, man. That's how they think we talk. So jump a little ahead a bit to the burqa. Wait a minute. All righty. Okay. Smile. Uh-oh, we're lagging. It's not good. Are you smiling? Oh, he's taking a picture of him and a woman in a burqa, right? So anyway, it's not good quality uh, uh, footage, and it's not streaming very well, but... They sit there and they show pictures of other women they've met with a burqa, and she's like, probably pretty pretty, probably pretty pretty. It's a funny clip, all right? You should check it out. You should check out any Harry and Paul thing. All right, next one. We're running out of time here. Chadwick Moore put up this post. Uh, Zuckerberg owned Instagram. Uh, Z sorry, Zuckerberg owned Instagram rushed to take this meme down for hate speech after I posted this morning and saw it going viral. This is inarguably political speech and a powerful meme 
We must have an Internet Bill of Rights. Real Candace O, real Donald Trump. Chadwick Moore, by the way, is getting real pissed off at all this stuff, by the way. And that is a picture of uh, uh, post-segregation education in America. And they had a real black girl. What would this be, like 1945, 1950? Um, Going to a white school and people screaming at her, I assume it would be the N-word. And this is exactly what Candace Owens, who's been photoshopped in there, went through with these social justice warriors. It was rich white girls screaming, F white supremacy, at a black girl who was just trying to have breakfast. Can you believe that? All right, next one. Oh, this is an interesting one. Uh, I tweeted that I liked a song, so the radio station banned it. Ty Richards has a song called Western Chauvinist. And he's never said, half the people think they're making fun of Proud Boys and me, and the other half think, that's a cool song. It's none of your business what the artist's intention was, right? But I, first I took it as he's being sincere and he likes us. Then I heard it was a joke and I just made a gif that had a black kid going, because it come, came up when I said feelings hurt. Um, that's, what's that called again when you use a black meme? Digital appropriation or something? I've never... Digital appropriate. Digital appropriate. I almost didn't pick that one up for a second. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it really is, though. No, digital blackface. Sorry, Tony. Mm, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> digital blackface. So, uh, yeah. So I tweeted out, hey, this is a cool song. They pulled... Austin KUTX Radio pulled the song from the station after I tweeted that I liked the song. Can't, how did we get here? Where, how is this America? This is insane. It's sort of like when they found out Proud Boys wore Fred Perry's and they demanded Fred Perry disavow us. So the CEO of Fred Perry goes, I don't like those guys. Uh, I don't care. (laughs) I don't care if the guy, the company who makes my pants likes me or not. Hey, check it out. I'm wearing Levi's. And by the way, they're huge fans of me. What a bizarre need. And why do you care if someone likes a song? They love this song. It was like number three in the charts. It was, it was on heavy rotation at KUTX because they thought it was making fun of me. And then when they considered the possibility, by the way, Ty Richards, I had him on the show. He, it's free on uh, CRTV. He refuses to say if he's making fun of me or not. And I don't care. I don't want to hear if he is or not. It's none of my business. Why do you want to ruin art? Why do you want to ruin fun? Yes, Alex Jones is hyperbolic. Yes, he says crazy stuff. He takes something true and then gives it a very colorful headline. Like uh, the tabloids when they say, uh, uh, Miley Cyrus wishes she was old. And then you read the article and and it says, I wish I could play older roles in, in movies. I get it. You're being didactic. You're giving me colorful language. This censorship, this this scrutiny is killing the color. It's killing the fun. It's killing the way we talk. We're at a point now where if you say this is gay, they have a huge campaign against it. When you say something's gay, you're making fun of the way you spoke in grade school. You're not actually saying, I don't like that record because it has sex with men and it's a male record and it's a homosexual piece of vinyl. What do you think we think? I love Unite the Right. It's a totally awesome rally. Lots of conservatives are going to be there, what, chanting blood and soil? Are you out of your mind? It's willful ignorance. You know that's not true. You hear a joke and take it seriously, like I did that video, 10 Things I Hate About the Jews. It was much more incendiary. I had more swear words when I first put it up, and Rebel changed it after getting pressure. But if you were to watch the video, I'm, I'm playing a drunk Archie Bunker in Israel who's mad that Israelis don't love Israel enough and are ashamed of their wall and give Palestinians too much leeway, and I wish they would love Trump more. It was the farthest thing from anti-Semitic, but people still go. I read Jonathan Swift wants uh, the Irish to eat their babies. He's, a, he's pro-cannibal. And they know that's not true, but they just want to win. So they're willfully ignorant. We are going way too long here. All right, here we go. We're up to like, I don't know, the 10th one? Eight. Eight. Thanks to Milo for recognizing the Donald Trump star thing is a proud boy thing. Get your Donald Trump star here. You ready, folks? The grand reveal. This is the who done it in clue. This is why we're banned. A proud boy put up those Donald Trump stickers. Put it back up there. They don't even see my ugly face. Um, put up those Donald Trump stickers. The faction. The faction and Sabo are both proud boy affiliated. They put those up. They put up 45 of them. 
And uh, I was kind of annoyed that we don't get enough credit. I actually asked those guys, can you put a little logo on the corner or something? And they go, no, I'm not doing that. Don't affect my art. Uh, and this is, again, I hate this word, but it was cool. And it has mainstream appeal, especially, not mainstream appeal, but sort of hip appeal. God, I hate all the, you making me make these, say these words. But um, that's what scares the left. They don't mind Richard Spencer, David Duke, Jason Kessler. They don't really care about Unite the Right because they, they know it has no appeal. But this kind of thing is funny. It's fun. And they hate Trump supporters doing funny and fun and rebellious and interesting stuff because it's too appealing. And we have 18 to 25s. 25% of them identifying as not liberal for the first time since the 80s. We have a 20% support rate from black Americans. That's the highest it's ever been as far as black supporting right-wing leaders. There is a major walkaway movement going on right now, and the left is hysterical. They're floundering trying to change it. And I honestly believe that it was this, me taking credit for these stickers, and then Milo subsequently having them mass produced and selling them, that made the left go, all right, we got to pull the plug here. This is getting too fun. These guys are getting too interesting. Ty Richards is making some cool songs. They're, they're too much like Animal House meets Jackass meets the Knights of Columbus. That's too appealing. I have to pretend they're incels or something or, or they're the tiki, t tiki Torch guys. This is too fun. And that's why I always say that this whole thing, this political correctness, this war is a war on fun. All right. The gods must be angry. So Howard Stern, when Alex Jones was a victim of the conservative purge, by the way, when I had him on my show, he said, you're next. And I was purged 12 hours later. But uh, how, I heard Howard Stern on his show and he said, uh, you know, this is, uh, I don't do a very good Howard Stern. I assume you don't either. Uh, you know, this is uh, hey, Robin. Hey, Robin. <laughs> Robin, this uh, is, uh, you know. Yeah. You know what annoys me about Howard Stern is he, he has this thing where he interviews celebrities and he'll say, oh, you met Robert De Niro. Were you intimidated? Were you scared? No, dude, I'm a famous person. I'm Ryan Reynolds. I was in Disney shows when I was eight. I've never not been around famous people. I wasn't scared. And then the other trope, every, everyone is, have you tried therapy? You gotta try therapy. God, it's so tedious. Anyway, um, so he's, he said, and this doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how you feel about Alex Jones. Howard Stern, the guy who's likely played, paid millions in fines for violating the regulations. He said, well, at the end of the day, it's like screaming fire in a crowded theater. What are you, me, when I was 15? For once and for all, can we explain that thing? It was a 1919, literally from 1919, analogy used by a judge, not a dictum. Actually, it was a dictum. It wasn't a law. And it was overturned like 40 years ago, the law that that analogy was made from. You cannot yell fire in a crowded theater if you know there's no fire and if you know it's going to do damage and hurt people. Alex Jones is not screaming fire in a theater that has no fire. And he doesn't know people are going to get hurt. The Sandy Hook thing, he said, he didn't know parents were going to get harassed. So he screamed fire in a theater he believed to be on fire, not knowing it would hurt anyone. So even in your ridiculous, facile analogy, you're wrong. But it just pissed me off that Howard Stern, who I used to listen to every time I got in the car, uh, was so quick to throw someone else under the bus, bus now that he's making $90 million a year and can just impress his Hollywood friends. All he cares about is being invited to Jimmy Kimmel's dinner parties. He doesn't really care about justice or truth anymore. He, doesn't, he, he has nothing but disdain for his listeners, and he knows that they're mostly Trump supporters, and that makes him sick. What is it about money? I'm rich. I'm not a douche. <laughs> Why do people become a bunch of white glove-wearing, monocle-wearing D-bags? when they become millionaires. Is it just getting invited to parties? I don't want to go to parties. I've got a wife and three kids. I dread party invitations. Actually, I want to be invited. I just don't want to go. That's, that's how you feel when you're my age. I, used to, I saw a tweet about that recently, which I'll never see again. <laughs> it said, uh, I used to uh, sneak out of my house to go to parties. Now I sneak out of parties to go to my house. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I don't know what number we're at, we're at now. But some guy named Discondented Progressive, always anonymous, by the way. You'll notice the alt-right and the alt-left always hide their faces. Yo, but I don't want to get fired. Dude, I've been nothing but fired. I get fired so much that when my son is trying something, he wants to quit, I say, Hey, 
You're a McKinnis. McKinnises don't quit. We get fired. Ooh, that's a good tweet. Um, so this guy goes, dude, your Proud Boys are in the top three groups people think of when coming up with lists of alt-right groups. And I go, yes, and you a-holes also think Trump is a white supremacist. And he goes, the shoe fits. So the fact that uh, everyone in your little bubble perceives you that way doesn't mean that you're that way. And they always use this. I've actually, when I try to sue these people, their lawyers go, well, I don't think it was egregious for me to accuse you of that because the SPLC, the blah, 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 and they list five idiots who have also said it, implying that it must be true now, that it said a lot. That's not the way the truth works. The truth is true and lies are lies, no matter how many people on each side. And as I said earlier, all I see online is you're a Nazi. And then I go outside and it's like, hey, Gav, can I get a selfie? That's in New York City. Jesus Christ, in Texas, I'll probably, I'm probably the Beatles. All right, here's the doozy. August 10th. What are we today? August 11th. So this was still yesterday. This is what I mean about addicted. I'm clearly tweeting too much. <laughs> this, is like, this is like Orson Welles getting banned from drinking Paul Masson wines. Just do anything? That's an inside joke. He did a commercial drunk. I highly recommend you look up Orson Welles, Paul Masson outtakes. So here is a tweet Proud Boys asked me to put up, one Proud Boy asked me to put up, just so if anyone asks him, he can reference it. And I went, okay, it sounds like I'm saying I don't, I don't have orgies every morning, but here we go. Holy shit, there are people who have orgies every morning. That must be fun, huh? Did Hugh Hefner have orgies every morning? Dude, I get an orgy like right when I wake up. So It's brutal. <laughs> Dude, it's unbelievable. Well, judging by his wife, he definitely got bored of screwing hot chicks. <laughs> All right. It goes without saying, Proud Boys have nothing to do with this and won't go near it. We are a multiracial group that eschews, I have a big vocabulary, the alt-right and despise, and they eschew us too, by the way. The alt-right gives me death threats all the time. And despise DNC operatives such as Occupy Wall Street's Jason Kessler. And then it was information about Unite the Right. Uh, next, we got to wrap this up here. This is, we're like 20 minutes. Dude, we're like 20 minutes over. We're 43 in. 43. All right, we're out of time. Uh, but I will power through it. Dads go bald from the sort of Damocles constantly scraping their head. Now, I am so addicted or was so addicted to Twitter that I would think of tweets as I slept and I dreamt this tweet. And it's actually completely brilliant because people tend to forget that a man has everything on his shoulders. He has to make sure all his kids have health care. He has to make sure no one hurts the house. He has to make sure his wife's safe. There's always money for food. Everyone is his responsibility. There's always the sword of Damocles. Say you go camping. You gotta make sure that the kids are safe and they're not gonna go near the water and drown. That's your job. The wife's job is to make sure the community of the little mini community of the home is safe and nurtured and everyone feels loved, the guy has to sort of be on the front lines with his spear going, anyone trying to mess with us? Anyone trying to mess with us? It's a sword of Damocles. And men tend to be bolder than women. And that's a great way to sum it up in a very short sentence. That should be a t-shirt, by the way. In your dream, you're Dennis Miller? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Dads go bold from the sword of Damocles constantly <laughs> scraping their head. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the book of Ecclesiastes. <laughs> Does he have those written down on cue cards? I don't know. They're pretty good. That just made me go red with laughter. Um, all right. In the slogan, Make America Great Again, when specific... Uh, uh, so this is John Fugel saying he's kind of an annoying leftist pussy who always buckles when you confront him. But he's tough on Twitter. And he goes, in the slogan, Make America Great Again, when specifically in U.S. history does the again part refer back to? Questions for Trump defenders, number one, MAGA. We get this a lot, and they go, you want to make America great again? Back in slavery days, yeah. I want to go back to the days when people died when they scraped their knee. I want to go back to the days where cotton was so uncomfortable that everything you put on felt like a potato sack. I want to go back to the days where you had sex with one person you didn't know, and you died of syphilis. Nobody wants to go back to that. you got to look this up, Brian. Look up Legs by um, ZZ Top. Yeah. It's an 80s, we want to go back to the 80s, basically. We want to go back to the days when men were men and you rode jet skis with wraparound sunglasses and guys with blonde hair weren't immediately assumed to be date rapists and the bl blue-haired cat moms were not in control of every second-tier blog that every mom read and then hassled you about. Actually, my mom's pretty awesome um, about all this stuff. She's like, give him hell, boy. 
So I wish I could join you. <laughs> that nobody mentioning he's a proud boy. This is when the uh, sticker story first broke. Uh, and no one was, they just said that it's a street artist. By the way, aren't our street artists better than theirs? Look at Banksy. Oh, I did a graffiti of a rat that's starving to death, and a rich guy's going, no thanks, I'm not going to help you. Oh, I have a little girl who's holding balloons, but the balloons are bombs, and everyone's going to die in a war from half a century ago. Oh, I went to Israel, and I have a Palestinian holding his hands out, and the Israelis going, no way, Jose. <laughs> I hate war. And then I have a gun, and, and the gun is breaking in half. And they're going, no thanks, buddy. You're in a school shooting. There's a kid. He's reading a book, but the book is a bomb. <laughs> and then you have Sabo and the faction going, putting, you all knew at the Academy Awards, <laughs> calling Jimmy Kimmel a crybaby all over benches. I mean, I don't think they've ever done anything that wasn't amazing. So that's freaking out the right because they don't want Trump to win. Again, this is all about the midterms. All of this conservative pur purge is about the midterms. They think social media won it for us, and they go, well, that's not going to happen again. No, dude, your crappy attitude, your coming apart, as Charles Murray would say, your satellite existence where we have nothing in common, you don't know anyone, you never met anyone is why Trump won. Your disdain for middle America, your disdain for the flyover states, that's why Trump won, because you're a dick. It's like Charles Krauthammer used to say, they think we're evil, we just think they're wrong. Laura Loomer, ha 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 ha, some mental disorder, is that what they're calling it now? I'm sure it had nothing to do with who his father is. I'm sure that his ideology had nothing to do with why he was training kids to become jihadis, nothing to see here. And she's referring to a tweet from KBO4. To me, there's obviously something happening, some mental disorder, something, I don't know what it is. He said about his son, Siraj Ibn Wahaj. Now, that was the guy who had the jihadist training camp. We'll be talking about this on our next show. Uh, in, uh, what was it, New Mexico? Where he was teaching Muslim kids to shoot up schools. And this is the same kind of black Muslim ex-con types that are in Islamburg, jihadi training camps, the ones that Proud Boys got made fun of for being suspicious of. Will Summer over at the Hill said, no, no, there's nothing going on in Islamburg. Uh, this one is a different one, Gavin, you're wrong. Okay, so jihadi training camps aren't a thing. All right, and this guy, by the way, Siraj Ibn Wahaj, guess what his dad's in prison for? Oh, organizing, not the World Trade Center attack in 9-11, but the previous one, whenever that was, I forget. 91? 91, no, I think it was, uh, Anyway, for organizing the bombing of the World Trade Center that didn't go great for them. So these are renowned, well-experienced terrorists. They're not mental patients. They are terrorists, jihadis. 93. 93. And they got caught. And of course, the left goes, it's just a lone wolf. All right. What number are we at now? Number 16. 16. How do you know? That's good that you know this. Oh, what a good boy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez when Ben Shapiro called her out and said, uh, I want to have a debate with you. I'll give $10,000 to charity. And she goes, stop catcalling me. What? And I said, uh, he doesn't want to F you. He wants to hash out ideas in a public forum. His intentions include truth and money for charity. Is there anything on earth you actually understand? Next. Breaking, Tommy Robinson has a new trial date set for the 4th of September. They want to put him back in prison again. Share the link. My fingers are crossed on this, and I think he might get away with time served. But again, there is one other case of contempt in court that is even close to this in the history of Britain in, in the past, let's say, 100 years. And Ezra's been meticulous, meticulously researching this. And it was some guy who was screaming at the judge, calling him an oaf, telling him to go F himself, he was then told to show up in court for contempt of court. He didn't even show up, and the guy got a slap on the wrist with no jail time. And this is someone berating the judge in court and then refuses to show up. That's the only other case like this. Tommy has a camera on, not on the court steps, but outside where pedophiles are being sentenced, and he's locked in a box with a blue mat on the ground, a box that if it was a dog, PETA would be outraged. He was there 23 and a half hours a day and then a tiny cage for half an hour a day for daring to inconvenience 
pedophiles. And no, it did not affect the outcome of their trial. Their sentence was already set in stone. You bastards. I love how, isn't it weird how the left have become the champions of pedophilia? <laughs> nice allies, dude. Um, all right, I think we're at uh, 18. So this is uh, unbelievable. This is Alex Jones. I hope it loops. This is Alex Jones on my show after he had been conservative purged in the great purge of 2018. And he's pointing at me and saying, you're next. He's the prophet. He is Nostradamus. Think of a funny pun with Nostradamus. The last one I did was the dudes from that punk band Corrosion of Conformity. The, the, when, when one of them did coke, he thought he could see into the future, and we called him Nostradamus. Yeah, that was, was going to be close to mine. Um, Forget it. Yeah, All right, 19. This is back to the Trump thing, and other people are agreeing with me. By the way, that Trump thing got me uh, 4,000 retweets, and tr Twitter messaged me before it and said... We've been getting notices. Uh, we got a formal notice about this Howard Stern. I got one. What? Uh, who, is that, um, who is that old piano player that used to predict songs in the future? Uh, Nostradamus Mozart. Whew. Pretty you know good, what? Huh? Please don't interrupt the show again unless you have something that is going to leave the park. We don't need to stop my momentum for a grounder. That was a grounder. That was a grounder, and you're out at first. Um... And now I lost my, lost my rhythm. Oh, yeah. So this was back to the Howard Stern thing. 4,000 retweets. Someone filed a complaint on that where I said the gods must be angry. And, and Twitter, this is like eight hours before I was permanently banned, said, we got a complaint about this Howard Stern tweet. I don't see a problem with it. You're good. It's like, thanks, Jack. Um, so this is someone else today saying shame on him. And I say, if anyone can literally afford it, he makes $90 million a year. You can afford to go out on a limb and support someone's free speech that you don't like. This is free speech. It does include hate speech. It does include, in like I've got a politician hand going, it does include inconvenience speech. It is not about who's better, the Rolling Stones or the Beatles. The Rolling Stones. It's about things that make you uncomfortable. It's even about comedians and their disgusting, seemingly endless pedophile jokes. All right, this is the last one, right? And it's again about Stern. But it is, I, I wish it ended on the Alex Jones things, but life isn't like that. Life isn't convenient. No matter how much you try to censor people and make things go your way, you can't control nature. You know, the Indians, and I'm including every tribe there because I'm white and ignorant, had a saying about sexuality where they said, you can put a rock in the center of the creek, but the water will just go around it. We've been through this before a million times. And the Howard Stern thing is indicative of a leftist mentality. When the proletariat, and Marx talked about this, and I'm an, as an avid Marxist, punk rocker, <laughs> I, I'm aware of the Marxist dialectic. And what happens is the proletariat is the underdog. He's the worker. And then he gains power. And instantly, absolute pow power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And he becomes the oppressor. And so what we're seeing here with this war on free speech is those with power getting drunk with power and trying to censor us. Best of luck, guys. I wish you nothing but the best in the midterms. I can't wait to see who you bring out, who you roll out Barnum and Bailey-like, carrying them by the, by the mouth guard. Here we go, folks. We have one of the Kennedy's relatives with spit on his face, and his policy is hate has no home here. Yeah, America's not racist, you dunce. It's not homophobic. It's not transphobic. It doesn't care about trans people. Trans people are not on the average person's radar. You guys have put everything on this mythical Archie Bunker Klansman bigot that doesn't exist, and you know what it does? It ostracizes you. It annoys people and makes them go, get them out of here. Get Jim McCosta out of here. Get these social justice warriors, blue haired church lady busybodies out of here. They're boring me. They're taking away fun and color and diversity from the American ethos. They're trying to make this into a boring socialist Soviet propaganda machine where every song has the same mentality and every talk show host makes the same jokes and has the same political affiliations. No thank you. That is Russia. That is 18th century Britain. That's a monarchy. We are not interested in that anymore. You can fight us. You can try to make us lose. 
but you're losers and we already won. So as you approach me and try to control me, I have one thing to say to you, and that's get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. <laughs>